Okay, let me start the recording. By the way, the, the recording of the first part of the lecture should be already online. So to avoid errors, mistakes, like, like for the last lecture, if you want, just check everything is fine. Okay, I already uploaded it both on YouTube and on uh, the web portal. Okay, so let's come back to our discussion. Uh, you presentation. Okay, so we were talking about package managers. We were saying that uh, they should help the programmer to install libraries in practice or code developed by others and uh, uh, should help the developer to focus on uh, the code that is developing without thinking about libraries, how to install, download and use and so on. Okay, dependencies, etc. And we are going to see in practice how this works. So just a few theory slides and then we will try to, to, to use it. Okay, so we chose uh, the package manager. Actually, I chose it for you for this class. <laughs> so we chose to use the NPM, but it's also the most common choice. Okay, that is not package, package manager. It's not just for Node, that is the environment that allows us to experiment outside the browser, but it will work for all the other JavaScript projects. Also, the ones that we will have later in the course when we are developing with the uh, browser framework. Uh, so in the browser, sorry, so with the uh, React framework and so on. So not just a choice for now, but it's a choice for the whole course. And actually it's a choice of most of the programmers and the developers when using JavaScript. You'll often find uh, examples with NPM. Um, so the actually the NPM is already installed. That's a good news, right? Because you installed the node, hopefully. Um, so the execution environment and nodes comes with this package manager uh, inside, okay? So already ready for being used. Uh, actually, it, it, uh, the simplest way to use it is from the command line. I hope you are a bit familiar with this, but uh, I mean, we will give a really um, simple commands to use it. So first, we need to say to the package manager that uh, we want to use it. So let's say we say npm init, that's a, a program that we run, a command with that we run in the terminal. So on the command line, and it will create a set of files for us that uh, define uh, what's the project name and all this stuff, but also which are the packages needed to run our project. And in the beginning, if we say nothing, there will be nothing, okay? So there will be just our code. And then we decide to install some packages and tell the package manager to do it for us, and it will do it for us. And it will also note that these packages are needed in our project for our project to run, okay? Like uh, the library for handling dates, okay? So, uh, before going on, I would show you how, how this works. So, uh, so, this second part of the lecture is more practical. So, while y you were breaking, uh, yeah, this is the theme. Uh, I wanted to use the, the white theme. Uh, uh, you know, where, where do we set the white theme? Because I changed the computer because of the problem of the recording. This is the old one uh, theme. Color theme, I think that's the light, right? Okay, fine. So, because it's, uh, they told me it's a bit more readable in the recordings and also should be more readable here in the room. Okay, so while you were waiting, I created a new file, okay? In the week zero one, so I, I will upload it uh, when we finish the lecture. So of course, we always start with use strict, okay? Th this is our program, but at the moment, uh, I must say, we are not really interested in the program, 
Okay, so this is this will contain our program. You can write a console log, whatever if you really like. But uh, before doing this, uh, uh, I would like to say that my project should use this uh, um, uh, package. That is the package that handles dates. Okay. Uh, first of all, if we want to use packages, it's better that we develop our program in a folder. Okay, because so in this folder there will be our program, so our JavaScript files, but also all the other files uh, handled by the package manager. And we don't mix up things uh, with uh, the other programs. Okay, so I just did it here. So it's not a good, that's not a good idea. So let's create a folder. Uh, let's call it uh, QA since uh, then the, the example that we will do is about the question and answer. So creating a question, object, and answer, object, and so on. So let's move the file inside here. Okay. Are you sure you want to move it? Yes. Okay. And then, and then I told you, let's use the terminal. So the command line in Visual Studio Code is very easy to use it. You don't need to rely on external uh, windows and so on. So just there's a terminal item in the menu, new terminal. Uh, where the current working directory, I, I open two directories. So this doesn't appear to you if you just open one directory. Okay, so we are in this folder of my local computer. So in AWX, but we are in week uh, zero 01. So CD week zero 01. Oops much and then we'll change it into Q QA okay so you see this is Linux as I recommended and it's very similar to Mac OS as well I recommended to use uh, uh, Windows um, WSL so Windows Linux system what's the name in Windows so you should have something similar in Windows as well uh, <coughs> You see, there's the file that I just um, um, defined before, but we are in a folder that just want this file. And so we are ready to give the commands that we had on the slide. So the commands are, uh, uh, where are the slides? Here. npm init and then npm install and the name of the library. So code npm in it uh, space in it okay so uh, it um, asks us a few things uh, you can just press enter like the package name because actually this makes our program a package as well but it's not really important version description etc just uh, say yes to everything okay what happened here well, actually, a new file package.json has been created by this package manager. We don't re we are not really interested in everything that is uh, being written here. By the way, it's very basic thing like a uh, name, uh, description, uh, author stuff like this. But the fact is that in this file, the npm, the package manager, will uh, uh, keep the list of the packages that we need to use in our project okay so you see at, at the moment uh, there's nothing of this okay so let's give the second command so npm install a package okay in this case we use this dejs package okay <coughs> uh, how do we know the name well actually either we search the web or we give you some suggestions, okay? But as I told you before, you go to the NPM repository, there's a search um, field where you can fill uh, stuff. Uh, and, you know, you're searching something for dates, uh, ha have a look uh, at what, what, re what uh, date returns, okay? Uh, we will have a recommend package uh, that are recommended for our projects and our course, okay? But you are free to use more packages uh, if you uh, deem it uh, appropriate for, for your case, okay? So npm install the JS, okay? 
I need to have the internet connection to to make this command work, but I have it luckily. So now the package manager connects to the uh, package repository, hopefully, yes. And <laughs> query the package repository, ask, is there a package named DAJ? Yes, yes, please tell me where to download it. Uh, I, I downloads it, it um, you know, do a few modifications to our folder. In particular, it creates a folder called node modules. So inside this, this is actually a folder full of things. Uh, Okay, many, many things, but we really don't want to have a look inside this folder. This folder is completely managed by the package manager. That's the purpose of the package manager, that we as developer, we don't have to touch this stuff. Okay, the package manager will handle everything for us. Okay. Uh, and now this uh, library or package actually, actually a package that contains a library is installed in our system. And we can use it. How do we use it? Well, that's a bit later in, in, in the slides, okay? First, uh, let's have a look at what happened. You might have noticed that this part has been added to this package.json uh, file that was defined in the beginning when I initialized the project, okay, with the package manager. So basically now there's a list of dependencies that says, uh, in this case, in our project, I need the, the DayJS package at least version 1.11.10. So basically, by default, it went to the uh, package repository and downloaded the latest version. It says, uh, I downloaded this version, so the program should work with this version or above this uh, like accent, okay, uh, is uh, means uh, this version or above, okay. Assuming that future versions of this package are compatible, <laughs> okay. But let's say at least there's a version number here, okay. Uh, there's also another file that has been created that is this package log JSON. We can have a look at this as well. It, mm, similar to the other one. So as many, many, inf much information that is similar, like name version of, of our uh, code and so on. Uh, but there's more information for the packages. The version, okay. Also the URL that has been used to download the package, but also an integrity check. Okay, so a, a string that can be used to check if um, the package uh, the package content is uh, actually uh, what we expect or not. It's a kind of, a, I don't want to say a signature, this is a, 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 a cyber security master degree, so you should know the difference. It's actually a hash, okay? So uh, something that can be uh, derived uh, uh, in a unique way from the content of the package. And if the content is the same, you get the exact same uh, bytes. So in this case, this exact same string, okay? And if uh, just one bit of the packet changes, this is supposed to change a lot. So it will be very different, okay? That's the purpose of an hash. Uh, this concept should be f already um, known to you, okay? You should be already familiar with the concept of the hash. Actually, that's an hash do, uh, done with a certain algorithm. But again, we, we are not caring about which algorithm the, the package manager is using, okay? This is not a security course where you care about the algorithms and of hashing and so on, but I mean, let's say we trust that the mm, uh, package manager at the moment, we trust it that it has been uh, developed in a meaningful way, so it uses a, a good hash algorithm, okay? Uh, okay, so let's go back to the slides. So this is what we were seeing before. Okay, our project is named QA, not my project. It um, doesn't matter that much. But the fact is that when you install things, 
So you download packages, you tell the package manager to install things, uh, the package manager keeps track of these things uh, in, the, uh, in this file. Uh, with a key here in this uh, text file, dependencies uh, uh, saying the name of the package and the version. So after running npm, the command npm install and so on, you get this node modules, which is a folder that will contain the code of the packages and so on, and we don't touch it. The only thing that we can do is delete it, okay? In case we need to reconstruct uh, all the um, content of the packages uh, because it's been corrupted or modified for some reasons, uh, we, you know, we really don't know, or because it needs to be constructed from scratch if we give our code to somebody else that so has to download the, the packages again. Okay, because we don't want to distribute all the libraries together with our code. We would like to distribute only our code, okay? And then there's, there are these two files that we saw, package.json and package.log.json. Actually, package.json contains the list of the packages needed by the project. Actually, it's built uh, while uh, we develop. Every time we install something, the package manager keeps track of what we installed, and so basically, in, in the end, there's the list of what we need, okay? And the package log JSON is very similar to the previous one, but there are more details, versions, package hash, and so on, and we will come back uh, to this in, in a few minutes. And then there are our files, okay? Here, that's the index.js, we call it uh, example3, uh, question and answer. I mean, there's a name uh, you like and the name you need to know to, to run the, your program. Okay? Okay, good. So, we have the package installed. We need to know how to use it. Right? So, that's what we should do in our file. So, in our program. We need to use this uh, syntax. So, assign to a variable whose name is decided by us, but often it's the same name as the package, just to make things simpler to read, okay? And we say to the JavaScript interpreter to load this package uh, with this uh, require uh, directive, okay? This is something uh, peculiar of Node.js, so this require is not really JavaScript, that's actually something that works in Node.js. Okay, we will talk about uh, these uh, aspects a bit more later in the course when we are talking about uh, uh, modules and um, how things can be imported both in Node but also in the browser. So we need to talk a little bit about browsers before talking about uh, modules in general. Okay, so once you have written this uh, line, so const the yes require uh, the JS, you can use it because you see, you have a reference to something. So, this is, it's a constant reference, it's fine, it's a package, it shouldn't change, it's okay. The JS, typically what you import from a package is uh, a, an object, okay? It depends, depends on the package, okay? Same cases, it's a function, okay? Uh, here it's a function. But in any case, uh, when you see the documentation of the package, if it will give you an example on how to use this package, okay? You're not supposed to know everything. Uh, you didn't write the, the JS, so they should tell you how to use it, okay? And in the next slides, I will tell you a few things about uh, the JS, just because we will need dates uh, in the examples and in many programs. Basically, in any program, web program, um, at a certain point, you need to handle dates. So it's a nice library to start with, okay? Uh, for instance, if you go to the uh, documentation of the AJS, you will see that you can get the current uh, uh, day and time just by calling the AJS without parameters. It will give you a reference to an object that can be, uh, um, that has a property format that can be called, at the, 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 this, uh, this call will return a string that you can print, okay? 
So here we put everything that we have seen until now in the, uh, for JavaScript. So you see that's a function that returns an object. The object is a property and the property is a reference to a function that can be called and the code of this function is in the package and it will format what is contained in this object in a way that is nice for us, so a, a string. Okay? But as you see here in JavaScript, everything handling functions, uh, objects, arrays is quite transparent for us. They are all objects, okay? So we don't ne really need to think too much about this. They are references to some object that has properties, and if the properties are functions, they can be called, okay? So let's try this code before proceeding, okay? So before going on, um, just a couple copy and paste and on nothing really difficult. So we go into the JavaScript file, use strict, remember to always use strict, otherwise you, you know, you risk uh, the, the JavaScript strange behaviors, okay? So always remember also to save the file before executing it. You know, many, thing, many things happen and create problems that are very basic and just save the file. Just remember this, otherwise things don't work. And then we execute the file as we did last time. So node uh, x2, no x3, sorry, QA, QA. Let's see if it works. It's always a surprise. You know, sometimes you know, things don't work. Uh, that's the result, okay? So we get uh, a string that represents uh, the current uh, date and time in a certain format. Actually, we had format and we didn't specify anything for format, so it, give, uh, it gave us the, the default format for the library. Of course, there are parameters that we can pass to these functions to have a, more, a nicer format, a format uh, that we like more. But this is, uh, depends on what has been implemented in the day.js package, so in the library, okay? And we need to check the, the, the documentation of the package. We, we will have a look at the slides uh, that are a summary of this documentation, okay? Uh, okay, let's run it again. Uh, to say nothing. Ah, no, okay. It's just a really co a coincidence. In the same seconds, but uh, one minute more, okay? <laughs> I was saying it's the same, no, but it changes every time because what is it doing? It's reading the clock inside the computer, okay? And it's printing uh, the, the current date and time, okay? It's working locally. I mean, it's just a program that you run on your computer, like other programs. I read the, the clock of the computer and tells you something. Okay. Um, so let's have a look on how the library works, so then we can start using it. Uh, okay. So the AJS is a very simple library. We like it. It's compatible with the most uh, commonly used libraries in JavaScript project, which is actually Moment.js, that we recommended until two, three years ago. But then at a certain point, you know, this, uh, these projects uh, often uh, are maintained by people or companies that sometimes disagree <laughs> among them. And, uh, you know, at a certain point, uh, you know, the developers behind the Moment.js stopped uh, developing the, the, the library, okay? So it was really nice. It was really uh, quite a standard, I say, in the JavaScript world. Uh, but for some reason, it's not being developed anymore. And so probably it's better to use something else, which is being, uh, which, I which is constantly developed and so updated and fixed in case there are problems and so on. And uh, what we recommend is DayGS, which is a, a project that uh, is uh, compatible with this uh, very much used library, especially in the existing code until now. 
uh, worst boss in Node.js in the browser, so we learn something and we can use it for the whole course. Also, when we will go in, into the browser, program into the browser. Like in strings, uh, all objects that DJS gives us are immutable. Immutable in the sense that you are not supposed to modify them, okay? It's not like strings, which are really immutable because the environment forces you uh, not to do this kind of things. Uh, you know, uh, here immutable means that you're not supposed to touch them. If you want to modify a date, you get a new date. Like you get a new string if you want to process a string and so on. So in short, all functions that uh, modify a date will always return a new object instance. Okay, so a new date. It is support for uh, many, many things uh, that are uh, needed. Uh, localization, so means time zones, uh, or the way of printing the date. Uh, with different languages, different formats and stuff like that. But w w it's what you expect from a, 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 a date library, nothing really special. So there are uh, two, three slides uh, that tells you how to do basic things. Uh, like, of course, uh, as we just did uh, DJS, it gives you the date and time of now. So current date and time. Or you can specify dates uh, in some formats. Uh, um, actually, we don't really want to go into many details. Uh, the, those, uh, these slides are here mostly for reference, for give you a starting point from which you can play. You put it into the Visual Studio Code, you run it, and, and doesn't work like uh, you like. You, you go to, mm, to check uh, the documentation and so on, you do some modifications and so on, but you, at least you have a starting point. I want to tell you just uh, um, one word about this. You see this new date? What's this date? Where does date comes from? Well, actually, there's a date object in JavaScript. So this has not been imported from anywhere. It's like math, right? So it's inside JavaScript. We could have been used date, but it doesn't work that well. <laughs> OK, so I suggest you not to use it uh, if possible and uh, rely instead on this JS. And by the way, in the meanwhile, we also learn how to use an external package, okay? Uh, so this is the format that we got before, but you can format it uh, in the way you like, okay? You just need to search in the documentation what's a string and what you're supposed to write here to, to, to output what, what you like, okay? We don't want to spend much time here because it's really basic stuff, okay? You can uh, play with uh, the various parts of the date, so the uh, you know minutes, seconds, uh, day, day of the year, etc., and so on. Uh, you can concatenate the the method because every method returns a new object, and the object has the uh, properties that are the methods that you can call. And so, in short, you can write things like this which are quite readable and this is also a nice thing that we, we, we like, okay? So methods can be easily changed because every method that is supposed to return a date returns a day.js object that, is, that has actually the whole set of methods of any day.js object and so you can use it uh, in this way, okay? Uh, actually, day.js is a design principle the, that is uh, keep the things as, mo as smallest as, mm, as small as possible. So um, try not to put too much in the basic, uh, um, let's say, the JS implementation. But there are uh, what they call plugins for more extended functionalities. Actually, they've already been installed in the same package. That's why I call it package and not library because there are many different files and um, organized. Uh, uh, in uh, in an ordered way, like uh, here plugins or you know directories in general, and so maybe some uh, functionalities uh, might not be uh, immediately available, and you need to uh, rec uh, require so load the the corresponding package that is uh, available with the DJS. Okay, like for instance. Uh, this function, checking if the year is leap, so means as 29 days in February, or uh, you know something else like uh, probably the time zones and this kind of stuff. Okay. Um, 
So that's the way you use it, but you don't really have to invent anything. And this is in the documentation. It's just reported here for your convenience. Okay, so I recommend you, uh, finally, I recommend you to always uh, uh, use uh, some uh, good libraries to handle, uh, you know, the, the problems that you have at hand, like the dates, because uh, Typically, uh, if somebody developed a good library, has done a good job uh, in uh, checking all the strange cases, corner cases, uh, everything that can be wrong or, or, or difficult to implement and so on, and maybe they also did it efficiently, okay? Like, uh, uh, you know, dates are quite different, uh, uh, quite, uh, quite, um, not uh, quite uh, difficult to handle. Right, because uh, there's a different number of days each month. There are leap years. Uh, uh, there are even leap seconds. Uh, you know, if you don't know what they are, just check in the internet. So, and so it's really difficult to to handle the dates uh, really correctly. Okay, so just rely on some good library uh, and package in this case, uh, and and it's and you are done. Okay. So, uh, just one more thing, because you, uh, yeah, I think you will need to use it uh, in the beginning uh, in, the, in the previous lab, which is already, by the way, online uh, for, uh, for next week. Um, so, what happens in case uh, uh, we, uh, we do something wrong? I mean, like... Um, let me go back uh, and say we forgot to install the, the JS, or maybe actually, yeah, let's de delete everything. So, delete. Oh, the trash. Okay. So, what happens here? So, there's just uh, our file in the folder, like in the beginning. I mean, you put require something. This something is not fo uh, cannot be found by by uh, JavaScript and simply the program stops as with any other, let's say, fatal error. Okay, so you get this file, uh, you run it, uh, and let's say you have a look at the uh, at the errors and you understand well, I forgot to install something. Okay, this shouldn't happen typically, but I wanted to show you, you know, something that you might encounter in the lab because you are you're just starting with this uh, new technologies okay so we run the the, the 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 same command as before okay just to make sure everything is back in on track okay um <coughs> okay and uh, now it's the uh, now it works again okay so before uh, go going to play with the example and try to code something I want to recall your attention on what we have done now, okay? So, you know, you are in the master degree of cybersecurity, so we want to talk in particular about security and critical issues when you're doing this kind of thing. So, taking code from, we don't even know where, and put it into your program, okay? So, it's nice that you write uh, npm install and everything works. But where is the code coming from? Who checked the code? Is the code safe to run? Actually, that's code that is running on your computer. Okay? Uh, so you should be careful. So the code is running your project with the same privileges as your code. If your code, I mean, you, you, you run your code and your code has ability to delete any file in your system, is if you delete a package that decides to delete all files in your system, it will delete all files in your system. Okay, because there's no difference, it's not the code of somebody else running on somebody else's computer. You took it, you installed it in your computer, in your project, and now it's running as part of your project. Okay, it's like a library that you linked to, uh, to uh, when you compile a, a program. Okay. So, as the same possibility to access data, 
uh, if it access data and then opens a network connection because you have the ne in the, conne in the network open so you have the possibility to access the network it takes your data and send it somewhere okay so these things might happen how can we trust <laughs> the code that we download that's a problem right and also there's a second problem and maybe you can think it's less uh, serious one M might be i don't know but there's uh, the issue of availability so you downloaded it from somewhere this somewhere so this place in the cloud uh, as people say <laughs> there's in the cloud and if this place this file uh, this resource in the cloud disappears what are you going to do then so you distribute your code and somebody tries to download that package to run your code and that package doesn't exist anymore. What are you going to do? Okay, so this is not really a security issue because uh, you're not running anything. There's nothing that you can run. There's no code, <laughs> but it's an av availability issue. I mean, sometimes it's uh, not that different. I mean, you go and you want to book something and the system is not available. <laughs> it's a problem uh, for for you uh, for 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 the user in any case. Okay. Uh, okay. So about security. Well, first of all, uh, don't forget the most basic things. Okay. So there are repositories of known bugs. Uh, vulnerabilities and problems that code has okay so don't forget to check in these places there's a, a, a nice command that we can run let's try npm audit okay no what was it npm audit yes okay let's see well there are zero known vulnerabilities, at least in those repositories, again, around online somewhere in the cloud. We don't really know exactly where. Okay, so this repository, the NPM repository or some other repository, also keep track of the known bugs and problems. Okay, so this is really the first thing you should uh, do if you want to address your security concern. If there's a problem that is already known, it's useless to go and search for other problems. Start from those problems and see if there are problems for you. There is also this fix, but uh, basically, I mean, this fix is just a, how to say, a, a way of saying, well, uh, tell the package manager, please look if there's a more recent version of the package that maybe somebody has fixed. Okay, so it's not uh, known to have problems. Okay, because maybe today I'm installing the, the AJS. At the end of the course, there will be somebody who discovered a bug, a vulnerability, something, but I'm still stick with the same uh, version if uh, I didn't update it. Okay, but maybe the problem is already solved uh, and uh, that problem is known to be solved to be already solved by just uh, you know updating the library like you update your software on your computer sometimes on your mobile phone and so on you know? okay that's a really basic stuff but this one doesn't address the really the 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 main point of of our um, problem so how can we trust packages which are written by others i mean of course we can we can be quite confident in trusting code that we are uh, writing ourselves so we wrote the code we know what we are doing hopefully okay but if the code has been written by others well there's no really an easy solution okay as it happens with any other security problem i mean uh you should actually you want to be sure of what uh, what you are using you actually read the code check the code or m make it um, have it checked uh, by some trusted entities by some experts you're supposed to be experts in the end so you should be able to check uh, the, uh, the the code okay 
But uh, I mean, it's a ta really, really time consuming process. So try, uh, I mean, in big organizations, uh, there are people, there are um, developers that are in charge of making sure that uh, what we are using as libraries, packages, etc., is safe for your projects. Okay. Uh, so there are, <laughs> there is, let's say, the, the very, uh, the most simple method is checking the code. I mean, if you want to open this uh, node modules and so on, you can uh, go and check uh, the code and see if it resembles something which is reasonable and so on. I mean, this is a way of doing the the the, the, the check for for security. Okay. Uh, the, you have other classes that you are attending, they will talk about other methods, maybe some formal verification tools. So they take the, the code, that they run some analysis and stuff to make sure there are no mm, particular types of vulnerability and so on. But the only thing I can recommend here is uh, try not to rely only on, um, you know, reputation well i downloaded it from the npm repository for sure it's safe there's nothing sure here <laughs> i mean yeah probably it's safe i mean it's safer than downloading from whatever place in the internet i never heard before and so on Pro probably yes like uh, if you want to exchange uh, your money like you want some dollars it's safe to go to the atm machine or in the bank then you know, to stop a random person around, you know, in, on the street and ask if they can exchange uh, your money for some, some other currency from, for dollars and so on, right? Yeah, that's the same concept. But, uh, you know, it's not just because of the reputation that everything uh, is safe, okay? So, actually, um, you should uh, take, uh, you know, reasonable... Uh, steps uh, in ensuring that what you are doing is probably safe, okay, by combining some of the techniques uh, here. I mean, checking the code, maybe randomly checking the code if you really don't want to check everything. Ask colleagues uh, that are able to use tools for verifying the code uh, or use tools yourself and so on. And in the end, of course, nobody can have any uh, assurance that everything is, uh, is safe. But in the end, after you know, running a lot of checks of this type, probably you are quite sure that uh, the package can be considered uh, uh, secure enough to be used in your project, let's say, okay? Uh, actually, this has to be done for each version of the package because each time the developer changes something, like uh, the, no, uh, the AJS developer changes something, you should check everything again. You can do a differential check, that's fine, okay, but I mean, everything, every time things change, you should recheck everything. Um, and then, how can you force your project to use only the packages that you have checked. Well, actually, what you have done before is not the way to go. <laughs> so, you know, just download it from the internet is not really a good option, <laughs> okay? So, you should, uh, you know, uh, decide which packages are really uh, necessary for you and have uh, your organization, your company, or yourself, if you're alone, uh, check everything, okay? And then stick to those versions of the packages and actually to those packages and force your project to always use and only use those versions of the packages, okay? So, in short, the, the, the easiest solution is basically install packages only for a private re registry that contains only what you have checked, okay? 
And if you are in a serious company, so a big company that cares about security, actually they do this way. I mean, if you go to, I don't know, Apple, Facebook, whatever, you know, those big names, they don't uh, really write NPM install from the internet and so on. They have their private repository where somebody has checked uh, that the version of the packages and the package content and so on does what is expected and nothing more and so on. Of course, s uh, there's no real security because nobody can be really secure, everything is perfect, okay? But this mitigates the risk uh, as much as possible, okay? And also, if you have your registry and your repository, you automatically solve one of the two problems that we have seen before, so the availability. It's your repository, it's on your computers, your servers, so it cannot simply disappear because somebody decided to change the license, not make it available anymore, turn it off the server or whatever, okay? So that's a good way to do. Unfortunately, we will not have uh, you know, all the time and resources to implement our own repository, <laughs> okay? But it's pretty simple to do that. Uh, there are, uh, you know, repository servers, so software that implements a repository server that you can run on your server and so on, okay? Uh, here in this course, we would like to understand the issues and then since uh, in any case, we will not be able to check uh, every package line by line, okay? We want to just, you know, to understand what is uh, the best way to do in the resource limited environment that we have. So we cannot really check the package content um, for each packet that we use. Okay. And then there's a, a, some help that comes uh, from the package manager because I showed you before, you, s you saw this uh, cryptographically secure hash that has been stored in one of the files of your project. You remember the package log JSON? You remember the, this hash? That's called integrity here, but actually that's a hash of the package that has been downloaded. What's the problem here? It's just that the first time I download the package, I need to trust what I have downloaded. The second time I download the package or download it again, or I distribute the hash with my source files, the ones that are installing the packages can check if the hash match, the, the, what, what they download matches the hash that I distributed with my code. But the first time, I cannot do anything about this, okay? I just, you know, download a, a file and <laughs> I compute an hash and I trust this hash. I can check if it's the same hash on the, repo on the remote repository, but I mean, this doesn't really solve anything because if the remote repository is an uh, evil player, so if there's some problems in the remote repository, they will modify both the package and the hash. So either the hash comes from a secure place or from a place where they guarantee that they check the content of the repository and uh, that hash correspond to a secure package or there's no point in checking the hash uh, when you download the first time. The second time and the, uh, the, the next time, it's just useful to make sure that you're running the same version and the same content that you downloaded the first time. Okay? Okay. So, just to conclude the, this uh, explanation and then we'll code a little bit. So, recommendation number one is uh, always use the package like JSON, okay? We have seen it's not really, um, it's not really needed to download the packages because I just need the list of the package names and the version, okay? But if I have the hash as well, I can check uh, if when I download the package, it's the same package that I downloaded before or the developer has downloaded before. If I have the hash and the hash is in the package log.json. So please distribute the lo package log.json together with your code if you're using the NPM package manager. This is peculiar of NPM. Other package manager have other file names, but more or less the same concepts. Okay. 
Um, so just uh, let's play a little bit. Uh, you see, we change a letter, V, uh, let's say W, okay? We save the file. We remove the node modules. So the library, actually, the package that we downloaded. And we reinstall everything, npm install. So without parameters, this command basically reads uh, your package.json files, check for the dependencies, and make sure that everything is installed correctly. Let's see what happens. Let's hope that something happens. <laughs> we need to wait, wait a little bit. OK, oh, something happened. <laughs> Just to, to show you that this, this hash is actually checked. Uh, Tor ball, ball data for the JS, et cetera, seems to be corrupted. Yeah, actually, I can, they cannot really say where well, somebody modified it, etc. Actually, it's not in the form that we expect. So it's not the same bits that we expected according to the hash that we had. Okay, and modify the, the hash because I cannot modify the package. The package is uh, on the repository, right? Uh, if it's my repository, I can play, I can play with that, but, uh, you know. And so, uh, what, what can we do? Well, we should try to understand why this is happening. Uh, is it a, a, a transmission problem, really? Or is it somebody that's trying to send us uh, different code with the same name so that can insert some different code in our project, maybe some malicious code or, you know, some code that creates problem. We actually don't really know, okay? But this is uh, something that uh, a serious package manager should check, right? Even though, you know, the first time we still have to, to try what has been downloaded. And that's why in big organization there's people uh, that uh, download the package, analyze what's inside the package and then let's say, approve it and make it available on their private server where it cannot be modified anymore, okay? With the hash and so on, but, uh, you know, basically it cannot be touched by anybody else. So let's go back to the <laughs> correct hash so I, I can, you know, fix uh, the, the installation. Otherwise, <laughs> I cannot show you the, the, I cannot develop the example. Okay, so um, a few last words about the, this issue and then we will code. So uh, there are two different uh, commands that you can, you can run to install the packages in Node.js. That's install, as I just did, okay? So basically uh, it checks if somebody, something is already exists, it's there, it's fine, it's in the node modules directory. Something doesn't exist, it downloads it, checking the, the hash and so on. But, uh, you know, it's probably not the best way to install things, especially in, out in an uh, automated environment. You know that uh, nowadays, you know, things try, uh, tends to be automated as much as possible. You push a commit on uh, some repository and the repository recognizes you committed something and tries to build the software from scratch and so on. So to create, to always create the same uh, uh, environment in terms of packages and so on, npm install is not the best command, okay? There's an npm CI that stands for continuous integration. That is this process that I s told you. Uh, so you commit something and you uh, start a, a lot of uh, operation that builds your, your program. And this is guaranteed to give you a reproducible, a reproducible build. Uh, so in short, to come up with some, uh, uh, with a node modules, which is exactly the same as the one from which you started when you created and installed the project. The, the packages. So basically it starts by deleting the node modules and recreating everything from scratch with the exact same version that was written in the package log JSON. You see here, it's not, there's a version, there's not uh, this version or something higher in terms of number. This is exactly the same, this version. So you build 
and uh, everything with this exact version. Okay. Just last slide, and then we'll give uh, we'll go to the example and let's say code a little bit uh, and, and finish. Uh, you know, choosing the libraries, packages, and so on, it's a very delicate activity. Must be done very carefully, okay? Because of all the security concerns that I told you before. So you are importing code from somebody else in your project. It runs as if it is your code, okay? So a lot of considerations apply. There's not just a uh, matter of security. Security is one of them, it's fine. Uh, for sure it's important. But also, you cannot just install a library and think, you know, this library will be available in 10 years, okay? Uh, also very, very simple, maybe the first thing you should think, uh, can I use this library? Okay, you are playing, uh, we are playing actually in a classroom, so um, I mean, once the course is finished, everything gets deleted and we don't really care. If you're in a company, you're creating a product, a software, you are, you are selling something and so on, you're making millions, make sure you have the right to use the code first, okay? Because otherwise you need to drop the code and use something else and you start the process from scratch and maybe the library is not compatible, the new library that you choose is not compatible and so on. So make sure that you uh, make a wise choice when you choose packages, okay? Uh, think about of support in the sense that, uh, well, if you are a big company, maybe this is not so important, but if you are a small company, you don't really want to spend too much time uh, fixing bugs uh, in some uh, somebody else's code in the packages, okay? So if it's a package which is a good support, so you see that developers uh, who is behind those packages uh, fixes uh, the code soon when there's a problem, a vulnerability, a bug, and so on, that's a good sign. Otherwise, be careful. Also, documentation. I mean... It's really nice to have a library that does uh, all the things, but if you don't know how to use it, it's probably a, <laughs> a problem. I mean, it's not a big problem as the others, but uh, you know, you spend uh, time in trying to understand well, how the library is supposed to be used, and that's not good, okay? This is just uh, you know, a nice representation of what shouldn't happen, right? <laughs> uh, sometimes we will have some pictures like this, okay? So let's try to avoid uh, this situation, okay? So everything uh, relies on something which you are not really sure that uh, will be main maintained uh, well enough and for long enough uh, so that you can keep uh, your project running well. Okay, so let's go to the example. We won't have time to develop everything, but uh, let's try to do something. So we are the exercise. Uh, I I must say I just uh, rewarded uh, something that was not really clear a little bit. So please mm, download the latest version. But we are focusing on exercise number three now. So let's try to manage a simple data structure as an array of objects, especially in terms of objects which are constructed with a new keyword. Uh, that is what <coughs> we have done. Uh, what we have seen uh, in the beginning of the lecture. So um, this is the basic uh, step for uh, next week, so where we will build on this code, okay, and create something more. So we would like to uh, contain information about uh, a question and uh, all answers to a question, like uh, a website uh, um, such as Stack Overflow, or this kind of websites, where there are people posing questions and other people giving answers to questions and uh, uh, people um, voting for this question, saying which is the way better or worse and upvoting and downvoting and so on. We will try to develop a website like this in the end, but we will start from the data structure. We just have the language uh, construct, uh, language um, um, you know, keyword handling uh, objects and arrays, and let's try to use it, them. So each answer should contain a response, a respondent name, a score, a date, and so on, and the question is made a question, 
uh, a questionnaire name, a date. Here there's a date, a date as well here, and a list of answers. Okay? So let's try to define a construction function question to represent a question, implementing the following methods. Okay? So we want uh, an object that is a question and an object that is an answer. We will define a few answers, uh, put them in, a, in the list of answers for a question, and play a little bit with the uh, functions method and so on to print something on the console. Okay? So, uh, we can keep this here, no problem. Okay? So, since we will need to use dates, we already know how to use dates. Okay? And uh, uh, let's, uh, the, the text was saying, let's define a constructor function question. How do we, do we define a constructor function? You remember the slides? I'm not going back to the slides because uh, otherwise we, we, we are, we are um, losing too much time. But what's a constructor function? Actually, it's a normal function. It's not a special function. It's just a function that then you call it with new and it gives you an object. So the function is simply, say, question. We say that it's good habit to have uh, the first letter uppercase. OK? Uh, it gets parameters. Uh, we'll think about parameters later. Um, and then what do we are going to do inside here? Well, it's a constructor function. We call it with new. If, if we do something like uh, in object-oriented programming, typically when we do new, we call a constructor. So we pass a few parameters to initialize the object. Right? So what we, what we need here? Well, the text of the question, right? Yeah, text. And then what we're going to do with this text? We set it as a property of the object question, right? How do we set the property? Well, we say if we are going to call it with the, um, new, the object is the this. Remember that this. This, and then we decide what to put here. See how, how nice is uh, Visual Studio Code that is even trying to guess yeah, what we are going to write here. This text equal to text, text, right? Uh, maybe the 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 copilot uh, is even better. I don't know. I I, I didn't try it yet. I, one one day I will try. But for the moment, let's say, let's stick with the simple things. Okay. Question and name, date, and list of answers. Okay. A question is made of question, question and name, date, and list of answers. So. Uh, questionnaire name, so this uh, questionnaire, this cannot be guessed because I didn't wrote the parameter yet. Let's say questionnaire, yes. Uh, date, right, questionnaire, date. This is why you use an environment because uh, it helps you a lot by writing, right? And the list. <laughs> So the list, either I pass it uh, in the constructor, or maybe in the beginning it's simply empty, and then I have a method to add uh, an answer to the question. Okay? That depends on how you want to organize your code. Of course, what we are going to develop here is a possible solution. Sometimes it's constrained by the text that we are uh, presenting you as the text of the exercise, but sometimes it's free. So. I mean, depends on what you want to do. If you want to create a list of answers and then pass it as a constructor or have a method to add, well, I think uh, later it says there's a method to add, so it's better that we have an empty list in the beginning. But then, uh, you know, how do we define an empty list of answers? Actually, an empty list is an empty array, right? So how do we define an empty array? Open and close the square brackets. So these are these. Uh, doesn't have to come for, from from the parameters, right? This goes into a property of the object that will be returned by fun, uh, by question when it's invoked by new, right? Let's try it, okay? I don't want to write the whole code and then try. Remember, for the lab, just write a few things and then try. Uh, so, uh, const q, q equal to question. Uh, best, uh, wh what was the question? It was a nice question. Best way, best 
way of enumerate, enumerating uh, an array in JS. Okay. A bit self-reference, self-referenced question. Uh, so that's the questioner, that's me, and then there's the date. I need to decide if the date is a string or a DS object. That's my choice. As a programmer, I need to de decide these things. If I'm wrong, I'll go back and fix my code. Okay? If at a certain point while developing, I discover it's better to do it in another way, I go back and fix the code. Okay? No problem. Just to do some exercise, let's try to use a DayJS object. Okay? So I decide that in the property date, I keep a reference to an object created by an external library, which is the DayJS library, okay? If you go to the slides and see how to create a new date, okay, just, it's uh, a bit too, no, let's see, yes. Sometimes there are too many suggestions. Okay, DayJS. And then I just pass a string in the form that it can read. You can play a little bit or check the manual. In any case, 0, 3, 0, uh, what's today? 0, 7. Okay. And then that's all. Okay. No problem. I can go new line wherever I like in JavaScript. Yes, there's a question. New? Right. You're right. <laughs> we forgot the new. Okay, good. Somebody is still, uh, you know, uh, still paying attention. <laughs> okay, right. And then if you're curious, you can just uh, run the code without writing new. We can do that uh, later. So you, you, you get an idea of what's happening. You should know, actually, right? What, what does a function return if you don't specify the return value? That's, that's the point. Uh, so console log uh, Q. Okay, let's see what happens. Uh, so, that's the object question, text uh, question, uh, date. It opens the date uh, object, but it's not really useful for us, okay? But anyway, I mean, I don't have time to, to, to do too many modifications at the moment because of time constraints. Anyway, something works, right? So in Q, I have a reference to an object, right? Let's see what hap let's see what happens if you forgot if we forget the the new. So I rem I remove the new. Okay. The function doesn't get executed completely. Why? Because the this cannot be used in strict mode in functions that are not called on objects. So the this is undefined and the reference in the this, so saying this dot something <coughs> gives you an error because you cannot say undefined dot something because JavaScript doesn't know how to evaluate this expression. Okay? So let's go back. New. It's fine. Okay. And so what's interesting? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, let's put a I, I will uh, put the, the complete example at the end, okay? But just to give you an idea what we can do in JavaScript, let's try to write the add method that adds an answer to the list, okay? We don't have the answer yet. You will find it in the solution that I, I will put online. How can we write a function here? No problem. A function is just a reference to a function. It's just a property that has a function assigned. So this add equal to, and then you just need to decide how to write the function. Function something and so on. That's fine. Answer arrow function, arrow function so arrow, and then we add to the list, this list, okay? Remember list, list is an array. How can we add an element to the array? 
We saw it last time. Push, right? Ans. What's ans? At the moment, I don't care. I, in JavaScript, I don't have to specify types and stuff. I can add anything anyway. Arrays can be, con be containing anything, right? I will make uh, an answer object in the same style of this, uh, and I will add answer object. But at the moment, I can add anything, okay? The, the add function actually doesn't really care, okay? So, let me see if there's something interesting to do. Um, no, the rest is pretty similar. Uh, let me add a, a, an additional function, this uh, str, okay? It's nice to have uh, some, uh, you know, uh, function that converts your object into strings, so we can print uh, things uh, better, okay? Without too many strange uh, um, uh, values inside, okay? Just a function, so... Uh, function, just to not to write an uh, arrow, you can write an arrow if you like, okay? Function, return, uh, back ticks, so we, re uh, we rehearse the, you know, the template literature, literals, uh, this uh, text, uh, asked by uh, this uh, questioner on uh, on uh, this date format and here you need to check the the library okay year month day okay so asked by I cannot go new line here with the with the template literature. Anyway, so console log q str. <coughs> so a nicer way of printing my object. Okay. So basically, we defined a function that uh, is uh, being used as a constructor function. As we saw, if we call it without the new, it doesn't work. Inside the object, we put properties, and some properties are other functions that can access uh, your, uh, the values of the properties of the object and use them uh, for, what, for what you want, okay? So how do you finish this example? I will put you. I will put the solution uh, as soon as I'm back in the office. But you create another object answer, and then you create some new answers, invent answers. You do question add, okay, and then you try to implement a few of these methods, like uh, list by score. Okay, well, we forgot the score. We, we, we are in a rush. Okay, uh, it's in the answer, the score. Um, you know, just return something from a function and print what is returned. Okay, and that's all. More or less, that's all we need. Okay, so remember, we did, uh, we learned how to use a package. We use the DayJS package. And now we just need to finish this exercise. You know, it's very simple. It's not really uh, difficult to program. And we can put properties and methods inside any object and use it as we like in the program. Okay? Uh, are there any questions? No? So we'll meet again on Monday, room uh, R4 at 10, and uh, we will continue with the program. I will put uh, the slides online soon, okay? The next slides online soon. Thank you, and see you on Monday. <coughs>